The Spirituality Now podcast is sponsored by Delaflor Teachings International, a spiritual and systemic coaching and consulting company with the mission to help individuals, businesses, and corporations create brilliant futures through sustainable transformation. Also sponsored by the Network for Human Empowerment, a philanthropic TV network that serves Spanish-speaking communities with free, conscious education aimed to empower individuals to become the best versions of themselves. And our podcast producer, Ascend Media, Authority Syndication, delivering premium video marketing, podcast production, and social syndication. Welcome to the Spirituality Now podcast, a podcast committed to supporting you in your journey to life mastery and personal enlightenment. Welcome, my beloved friends, to the Spirituality Now podcast. I am your host, Yvonne de la Flor, and I'm always super excited to bring you know, to bring not only uh, the wisdom of my guests, but to be able to connect with you through this portal of technology that is supporting humanity to be together in times where apparent separation, social distancing, and all of those shenanigans are happening in the world. We are at the, you know, at the pivotal time in humanity where businesses, spirituality, uh, finances, faith, uh, school systems, education are being called to grow, to outgrow all systems and transcend. We are in times that I know they're challenging for many, but it's in the challenge, it's in the contraction that the expansions and the births of the new are possible. So that's why, you know, I'm not going to do a lot of intros and outros uh, right now um, or commercials. The only one that I always do is remember that we're a philanthropic podcast. The reason why is because I didn't want to be told, Yvonne, at this point in your podcast, sell the diaper, or at this point in your podcast, say this thing. I wanted to do this content to honor our guests, to honor their wisdom, their message for you to receive it in its more un- unadulterated my English, Spanglish, unadulterated way. So we are sponsored by my company, De La Flor Teachings International, a systemic spiritual coaching, mentorship, and consulting company for individuals and corporations too. I've been doing a lot of public speech speeches lately for car dealerships and insurance companies who will have known that faith had a place, faith in action, self-faith had a place in the business world. I think it's so important to have self-faith. Uh, we are also uh, produced and edited by the company Authority Syndication Marketing, as in media. So those are my shout outs for today for events, online programs and live events. I have a couple of live events. I'm so excited for 2022 to be able to host, again, live retreats, just go to our website at delaflorteachings.com. Anyways, enough of that. So let's go, we co- because, you know, let's go into the, our guest. I think, you know, I, I, I'm always having like, there, there's a saying that you got to surround yourself with intelligent people that are more intelligent than you, that, you know, in order for you to succeed, you got to be, around incredible entrepreneurs, incredible leaders, uh, people that think different than you and are experts in their area, just smarter people than you. And my guest is one of them. I heard her speak at a mutual group that we are, you know, members of. It's called Down and Dirty. Yes, Down and Dirty, led by the wonderful Tim Grover and Shari Wenk, who was recently our guest in the podcast. Go give a listen to her uh, podcast. was extraordinary. And I heard her speak in the group. And I was, I not only took a lot of notes, but I was so impressed by the, not only the intelligence, but her ability to convey very, uh, very complex terms for sales, for businesses, for scaling, for corporations, et cetera, in a way that 
I could understand them, you know. It was like, how did she just translate that? Something that is so important for companies, for growth, for, you know, for abundance, for wealth consciousness, and for actually creating results. How did she do this in such a simple, clear way? Let me introduce you to her. This is my beloved ally, Celia Fay. Myself, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name well. If not, you can correct me. Celia is a results coach and strategist for high achieving entrepreneurs. She has specialties in sales enrollment, sales team training, processes development, and self development. She works with her clients to crystal clarify their visions, find their unique steps, and life track where that vision is realized. She supports them to take the actions that brings forward what they intend to have. Very important. At the advanced level, she assists with developing processes for hiring, training, enrollment to achieve freedom from day-to-day operations. This, This sounds like beauty to me. Celia is in constant development of new performance tools that move the needle forward while cutting away wasted time and resistance. Hua. She loves to explore her home state of Wisconsin through kayaking and hiking with her beloved husband, Ryan. Celia is here with us. She's our beautiful guest, powerful powerhouse, as you could hear in her bio. And we're going to talk about all her magic and the spiritual power of sales. Welcome, beloved Celia. Thank you for the lovely and warm introduction. I'm excited to be here. Wow. So let, why don't we start on like, how did this magic of yours, this expertise of yours uh, started? You know, I've interviewed a lot of people that are, uh, you know, are in, in the billion dollar businesses, et cetera, et cetera. And it always started somewhere in their lives, something somewhere spiritual, some kind of mindset change that they lived uh, that took them to what they're doing right now. So where did Celia's magic began? A little bit of your story, love. Yes. So my big transformation that put me onto the path I am now started, of course, when I was born. And in 2013, I had a basically a health crisis that happened. And for me, it was definitely a spiritual awakening. And I had reached a point in my business. This was my first business that I was running. And I had reached a point where I physically could not sustain the business any longer because of my health and the the demand of my schedule and travel and everything that that business required. And so it, it, I basically had a choice. I could stay on that path and my health could continue to worsen or I could find new endeavors and new opportunities to pursue. And so I chose that path. I chose the higher path and and to stretch myself out of my comfort zone and start to heal. And that is ultimately the decision and the experience that led me to the path that I'm on today. Wow. You know, and if you don't mind me asking, and so it's amazing because it's usually our ailment that brings us a source, our, our success when we choose the higher path, as you say it, right? So you, you, you are bringing, what, what, what do you attribute that um, this is, right? That illness, what, what was happening in your life at the moment? Because I want people to understand that whatever they are going through right now, challenges, diagnosis, divorces, etc., is calling for them to grow. But what was happening around in your life that pushed you to, to make a decision to heal? Yes, I have explored this conversation and shared it many times. And what was happening in my life is that I had been living for everybody else's expectations of me since I was a very little girl. So who who Celia needed to be for her parents, who Celia needed to be for society, for the world, for everybody else. And I thought that if I did all of these things, that I would make, especially there was a specific parent, but I thought that I would make that person happy because I had been conditioned to um, basically, I'll just come out and say it like my parent was a narcissist. And so I had been conditioned from a young age to believe that my behavior 
directed their happiness. And I hadn't even figured any of this out yet at that point that that was what was going on. But essentially, I was living this life of, you know, um, this life on paper. I had a, I was a musician. I had a music business. I had a music studio. I had a full thriving practice. I had a band with my husband. You know, so outside looking in, you would say, oh, my gosh, Celia is so successful. She has her stuff together. She's living the dream. She's a musician. She gets to make her money as a creative. And really, it was a shell. It was a hollow shell because deep inside, I was I was deeply unhappy. I had been unhappy for years. I showed up. I had the smile on my face. I did what I needed to do because I'm an action taker. But deep down, I was so unhappy, and I knew that I was capable of more. So once that once that switch was flipped for my health, because literally that's what it was like. It was like one day I was, you know, quote unquote normal, even though the writing had been on the wall for a while, and I ignored it. The after the flip, the switch was flipped. I didn't have a choice anymore, and I had to start looking at those things and looking at my level of happiness, looking at uh, how often I was dealing with burnout. I had to really take an assessment of of how I was living my life, and so that experience led me into that into that moment. Wow, that's it, it's you know I'm I'm writing notes, and it is so powerful every single point that you've walked us through. I can, I can see how. You know, in your bio, we shared that you help your clients with clarity, with clarity, crystal vision, and the way you communicate, Sally, is like that. You know that that's something I admire of you. I aspire for that. You know, I aspire that something of this rubs on me as I as I pursue my own path of growth. But I want to go into what you just said about that externally. What people were seeing is that you were living the dream in the in the external world, right? But inside of you. You were in living hell. You know, our, our mentor, Tim Grover, says that um, the path, how does he say that we got to go through hell, right? The paradise starts, the road to paradise starts in hell. And I am so impressed because you actually, you said the key word, I am an, or, or the key phrase, I am an action taker. So I did what I needed to do. But you also realized that you were in, in, in hell, and you took yourself to the road to paradise, right? And uh, I want to commend you too. I want to pay tribute because you just did something that, you know, I've been working with people for more than 20 years, doing family constellations, helping, helping people through spiritual systemic coaching, heal trauma and address a lot of the father, mother wounds. You're the first person in 20 plus years that, do not address it's my mother or my daughter, my father out of respect. So I want to pay tribute to you because that that's elegance of of your path like no other. So so let me ask you, Celia. So you go through this road, you know, you take the decision, you flip the switch, which I love. And, and you were a musician. I, I must ask you out of curiosity. Tell me a little bit about that part of music, and then we'll move people into the world of businesses, of sales, of clarity and everything. But I want to honor the path of a musician because that was a surprise for me when you were giving the talk in in the group of Mr. Grover when you said, I was a musician. What? So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I started music lessons at a young age. My first trained instrument was saxophone. I started that at late in fourth grade going into fifth grade and I studied music all the way through middle school and high school. And then I went on to get my my bachelor's and my master's both in music and jazz studies. And so I studied jazz music and improvisation and all, all things jazz pretty much for, for several years from, from undergrad through master's degree. And where I actually got my start, and I, I have this is the first time I'm getting to share this part of the story, was where I really got my start in improvisation was actually playing in church on Sundays. And I got, when I was in 10th grade, I started going to this church and they had a church band. So um, if you've ever been a church musician and you're a listener, you know that you get recruited into the church praise band if they have one. And so I got recruited and I started doing um. that. And music became an outlet for me in high school, especially 